This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We have had a very busy weekend of stakes racing action, primarily focused in the mid-Atlantic region, which unfortunately had some bad weather as well. We are going to begin the program at Delaware Park, where on Saturday they ran a trio of stakes, beginning with the RRM Carpenter Memorial Handicap, $100,000 for the older horses. Let's head down to Delaware and the running of the Carpenter. And they're off. Trapped again goes for that lead. Clay is awesome up on the outside. Super Frolic looking for a spot on the far outside as they race into the first turn. Wagadugu has the rail next in line right alongside. That's Royal Assault. And the early trailer is the late running specialist Separado. As they make their way around the bend, Trapped Again leads it by a length, with Clay's Awesome tracking in second. It's about two and a half lengths to Super Frolic, who settles nicely into that third spot now. Three lengths to Royal Assault, another two length gap to Wagadugu, and seven more to Separado. Opening quarter, 23 and 2, as they reach the back stretch. Trapped again, and Prado trying to nurse that one along on the front end by about a length over Clay's Awesome. Right there, Super Frolic is a closer third now toward the inside. Five lengths further back to Royal Assault, another two and a half to Wagadugu, and five more to Separado, your trailer, as they make their way toward the half mile marker. Trapped again, leads it by two. Super Frolic has moved up on the inside, up on the outside, Clay's Awesome racing in third. Still about four and a half lengths to Royal Assault, two more to Wagadugu, and five more to Separado. Half 47 and 2 as they make their way into the turn. On the front end, trapped again, still leads at Super Frolic, though, is ranging up now on the inside. Make that on the outside now to challenge for the lead. Clay's Awesome racing in third. It's about three and a half to Royal Assault, followed by Wagadugu yet to get underway. And Separato trying to pick it up from the back, about eight lengths off the lead. They've got a quarter to go. Trapped again on the inside. Super Frolic on the outside. Her heads apart after a six and one, 11 and three. As they turn for home, Super Frolic now leads it by three parts of a length. Trapped again is trying to battle back on the far outside. Separato begins his rally. In between horses. Clay's awesome. Also, Royal Assault with a shot. It's on the outside. They're bumping now. Super Frolic trying to come back. Trapped again. Royal Assault is gaining steadily now. Royal Assault is surging to the front in the final yards. Royal Assault wins it. Trapped again. Hangs on a second. Super Frolic and maybe Separato. Royal Assault most recently seen running third on the DQ of Cuba in the Brooklyn Handicap at Belmont Park, picking up the victory from off the pace as the favorite over Trapped Again. One of the nice older local horses. This guy always seems to run a good race. He's got good early speed. He held on well to second. A super frolic. The uh, pace presser settled for the third spot. The winner, Royal Assault, is a chestnut four-year-old son of Chris S. from Fit for a Queen by Fit to Fight. Bred in Kentucky by Tracy Farmer, known by the breeder, trained by Nick Zito. Ridden to victory by Rafael Bejarano, Royal Assault completes the mile in his 16th at Delaware Park on a track labeled sloppy in 143 and 2. We're going to head right back to Delaware now on the running of the Delaware Oaks, a grade 2 for 3-year-old fillies. A big purse has drawn a number of very nice horses, including major grade 1 stakes winner around Pond and Sis City. Let's head down to Delaware and the running of the Oaks. And they're off in the half million dollar Delaware Oaks and Brooks Halo as expected. Breaks right for that lead, but Sis City up alongside is going to challenge in the early going. Followed by Our Lady Joy up on the outside, Round Pond racing fourth. Lisa Eyes settles in the fifth, and Dance Away Capote comes out of their six as they make their way into the first turn. Brooks Halo, well off the rail, leads it by two. Our Lady Joy saving ground nicely toward the inside of Sis City. Their heads apart in second and third. A gap of three and a half lengths to Round Pond. Lisa Eyes toward the inside, and Dance Away Capote the trailer as they move around the clubhouse turn. Opening quarter in a solid 23 seconds flat. And Brooks Halo on the front end, enjoying the off-going, leads it by about six. Sis City racing second, a length and a half further back to Our Lady Joy in third. A gap of two more to Round Pond, they quickly spread out. Five more lengths further back to Dance Away Capote and Lisa Eyes. Now at the back, some 15 lengths off the lead, and a brisk tempo being set by Brooks Halo on the front end after a half in 46 and one. Brooks Halo leads it, but the lead is down to about three lengths as Sis City and Our Lady Joy both moving up toward the inside. Round Pond is now a closer fourth. Then a gap of four lengths to Dance Away Capote and far back to Lisa Eyes as they make their way into the turn. 
Brooks Halo and Jason Lumpkin still showing the way, but here comes Our Lady Joy up on the outside, Round Pond. Also right there, Sis City, they're bunching up four across the track with a quarter to go. Our Lady Joy, Round Pond is sweeping by. Sis City couldn't go. Dance away Capote as making a strong run. The six and one, 10 and four, turning for home. Round Pond on the outside. Our Lady Joy on the inside is gamely hanging in there. Dance away Capote, we could have an upset. Our Lady Joy is digging in on the inside. She leads it by a length on the outside, Round Pond. Dance away Capote also with a shot. Our Lady Joy is trying to hang in there for another 70. She's going to win the Delaware Oaks. Our Lady Joy, Jose Lescano, Round Pond getting second. Dance away Capote third, a distant Sis City fourth. Big upset of the day had to be Our Lady Joy at 17 to 1, picking up the win here on a sloppy racetrack and a showery afternoon down at Delaware Park. Our Lady Joy pulled off the big surprise over the even money choice round pond. Dance away Capote rallied from well back, as is her usual running style to finish in the third spot. Assist City, the second choice in the in the field of six, very disappointing after not being able to get to the lead. She did loom at the top of the stretch, but came up flat in her first start under the trainer. Uh, the training leadership of Bobby Frankel. The winner, Our Lady Joy, is a three-year-old Bay Philly, a daughter of Vicar from Come On Joy by Cormorant. She was bred in Kentucky by Martha Burleson, owned by Richard Averill and trained by Kirk Zadie. Ridden to victory by Jose Lescano. Our Lady Joy covers the mile in the 16th and the Delaware Slop in 143 and 1. We're going to head right back to Delaware Park now in the running of the Robert G. Dick Breeders' Cup Memorial. Handicaps $300,000 for older fillies and mares on a turf course labeled yielding. Let's head down to Delaware Park in the running of the Robert G. Dick. And they're off. Pretty clean start for them all. Honey Rider with that rail comes out on top with Baxter Hall up on the outside. Gajima with affection on the far outside. Orkin looks to tuck in toward the inside in fifth. Followed by Natalie Beach as they make their way into the far turn for the first time. Kojima leads it, but with affection up on the outside, is moving up alongside. Honey Water now settles back in that third spot. Baxter Hall, Kate Winslow caught three wide around the bend. Orkin still saving ground nicely toward the inside. Followed by Natalie Beach, Sweet Science, Bay Tree caught four wide around the bend. And Joyful Chaos saving ground around the turn there on the inside. They're well bunched as they make their way down the finish the first time. And on the inside, Kojima leads it by a head. Right there with affection and second up on the outside, Baxter Hall in a good spot. On the far outside, Keith Winslet. Honey Rider still tucked in nicely in fifth, followed by Orkin. Up on the outside, Bay Tree, then Sweet Science, Natalie Beach, and your trailer is Joyful Chaos. Opening quarter in 26 flat, the half in 51 and 2, so it's been a rather easy tempo on the front end for Gajima and with affection. Up there, three wide backs to Hall, and Kate wins us at a wide trip so far, losing ground around every turn. Orkin has saved ground every inch of the way, followed by Natalie Beach, Bay Tree alongside, then Sweet Science and Joyful Chaos still lagging behind. They've got about six furlongs to go, and the opening six furlongs time wise in. 116 and 4. So it's still a snail's pace on the front end with With Affection and Gajima head to head. Baxter Hall is right there. Kate wins it up on the far outside, is racing in fourth. Honey Rider tucked in in fifth, still waiting for some room. Up on the outside, Orkin is now angled off the rail. Natalie Beach toward the inside, followed by Bay Tree, then Sweet Science and Joyful Chaos continues at the back. They've got a half mile to go and the tempo sure to quicken. With Affection and Gajima are still going at it head to head. Up on the outside, Kate wins it, is right there. Toward the inside, Baxter Hall. Honey Rider's now angled off the rear, has some room and begins to move up. And Natalie Beach is moving up down toward the inside. They begin to bunch up with affection. Gajima, here comes Honey Rider with that three wide sweepy move. Still under a hand ride. Honey Rider now to the front as they turn for home. They're going to have to catch her. Honey Rider leads it by a length. Natalie Beach now angles to the outside for clear sailing. Also right there is Kate Winslet. It's Honey Rider on the front end by two and a half. Joyful chaos from the back of the back has made a bull move on the inside. But getting the jump. It's Honey Rider, and Honey Rider and Edgar Prado will not be caught today. The battle's for second. Sweet Science now rallies into second. It's going to be Honey Rider by five. Sweet Science second. Tight for third. Joyful Chaos or Natalie Beach. Honey Rider, the favorite in a full field of 10. Despite that yielding surface, they all showed up, and it was a very, very nice effort by Honey Rider from off the pace. She rallied beautifully under a hand ride by Edgar Prado, took the lead in about four strides to win over Sweet Science, who rallied from far back off the pace after being blocked on the final turn. Natalie Beach also made a big move after being barricaded behind a wall of horses under Mario Pino. The winner, Honey Rider, a grayer roan four-year-old filly, a daughter of lasting approval from Quando Query by Affirmed, was bred 
in Kentucky. She was bred by Wimborne Farm, owned by Glencrest Farm Limited, and trained by Todd Fletcher, ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Honey Rider covers the mile and three eighths on yielding turf in 220 and two. We're going to head right back to Delaware Park now for a trio from Sunday, beginning with the lighthearted stakes for three-year-olds and up. Phillies and mares going six furlongs. Let's head down to Delaware, the running of the lighthearted. We're set. And they're off. Pretty even start for them all. Storm Mintz will away well, as is Border Bound toward the outside. They vie for that lead. A vision gray on the far outside. Um, Petito moving up with the rail. That's Nick Lai. Miss Victory now splitting horses quickly into contention. There goes Miss Victory, but Border Bound has the most early foot. Miss Victory racing second up on the outside. Storm Mintz for um, Petito between horses. A vision in gray is three wide. Nick Lai has the rail. A length further back to schedule. Then two lengths to Annika Lass. And the trailer is Spectacular Moon as they race into the turn. Speedy quarter, 21 and 3. On the front end, it's border bound, showing the way by a length and a half. Storm Minstrel chasing second. Down toward the inside, Miss Victory third. Ampletito between horses. Then comes a vision in gray. Annika Lass is going to try and loop the field four wide. Schedule is going to try and follow in between horses. Then comes dropping back Nick Lai and Spectacular Moon as they turn for home. Border bound has been collared by Storm Minstrel. Storm Minstrel to the front. Border bound. Ampletito's kicking in on the outside as they head for home. Storm Minstrel leads it by three parts. On the outside, Ampletito's trying to run her down. Followed by toward the inside, Border bound. It's Storm Minstrel on the inside. Ampletito has momentum coming on the outside and Umpetito now begins to edge away. Umpetito upsets Storm Minstrel. It's going to be tight for third. Schedule edging out Annika Lass. Umpetito picking up a nice three-quarter length victory in a game effort over Storm Minstrel with Schedule rallying from far back off the pace to finish in the third spot after moving up nicely between horses leaving the turn. The winner, Umpetito, another nice effort for this hard-hitting, sprinting mare. She is a six-year-old daughter of Suave Prospect from Missy McKee by Silver Deputy, <clears throat> bred in Florida by John B. Porter, owned by Michael Gill, trained by Mark Schumann, and ridden to victory by Clinton Potts. Umpetito completes the six furlongs at Delaware in 109 and 4. We're going to head back to Delaware now in the running of the grade three Leonard Richards for three-year-olds. This race at two turns has uh, boosted the purse. It's a $300,000 purse now. It's through a fairly solid field. Unfortunately, we did have a number of scratches, including the scratch of Scrappy T, the runner-up in the Preakness. As a result, a short field, but a good field. Let's head back down to Delaware in the running of the Leonard Richards. And they're off in the Leonard Richards. Pretty good start for them all, but high limit. So they got to win a bit of a tangle and won't be sent to the front. And so sorted out and Sun King will do battle. Now high limit is quickly speeding up after that sluggish beginning. And he's going to make a three wide bid to get the lead. But Sun King with that rail is going to keep him hung out there three wide as sorted out in between horses. Battles with Sun King for that lead. High limit has to settle for that third spot around the bend. Not where he probably wanted to be. Followed by Letterman's humor and Golden Man toward the inside as they curl around the clubhouse turn opening quarter in 24 seconds flat as they straighten away and Sun King is going to be on the front end by length. High limit on the outside sorted now now taken back a bit by Bailey in third. Let him zoom up on the outside fourth and Golden Man still a close up fifth as they make their way down the backside. Sun King leads it by length over a high limit. Sorted out has dropped back a bit as Golden Man moves up in between horses now with the rail in third and sorted out back into fourth. Let him zoom right alongside half in 47 and three moderate tempo for this group and and Sun King trying to dictate that tempo. Now high limit set the challenge on the outside. It's about two and a half lengths to Letterman's humor. Golden Man and sorted out is the trailer as they make their way into the turn. The favorites are going at it. Sun King on the inside and high limit on the outside. They're now matching strides. Five lengths further back to Letterman's humor. Golden Man and sorted out doesn't appear to have it. It's a two horse affair right now as they go the six in 111 and two. Sun King on the inside is trying to fend off. High limit is trying to go by. But Sun King now edging away by a length. High limit is game, but that start may have cost him. It's Sun King opening up three lengths. Golden Man's trying to make a run for that second spot. High limit is trying to hold him off, but I don't think he will. It's Sun King striding away in the Leonard Richards. Golden Man is going to run a big one on one day's rest. High limit getting third. 
Sun King going to the front as he did a couple of times earlier on in his career before being taken back in the uh, bluegrass before his in his prior start before the Derby. Sun King did a nice job on the front end here, relaxed beautifully under Rafael Bejarano. His new rider as High Limit was ridden by Edgar Prado here. Uh, High Limit stumbled rather badly off the, out of the uh, the gate and didn't really get into uh, into the game quite as early as might have been liked. He did end up forced a little wide on the turn as he had to go outside of Sun King and sorted out who almost inexplicably was up on the pace in the beginning of the running of the Leonard Richards. Sun King opens up a five and three quarter length victory as a, the two the uh, two and a half to one five to two second choice in the wagering Golden Man. A very interesting horse rallying from off the pace to finish in the second spot. Keep the name Golden Man in mind throughout the rest of this program. You're going to see him again, believe it or not. High limit having to settle for third after rushing up to engage after being uh, being a little bit slow out of the starting stall. The winner, Sun King, a dark Bayer Brown, three-year-old son of charismatic from Clever But Costly by Clever Trick, was bred in Kentucky by Cambridge Farm and James Daniel Conway. Owned by Tracy Farmer, trained by Nick Zito, and ridden to victory by Rafael Bejarano, Sun King completes the mile in the 16th at Delaware in 143 and 1. We're going to head back to Delaware for one more. That, the Delaware Handicap for Older Phillies and Mares, the richest race in Delaware history. A mile and a quarter for the Older Phillies and Mares. Let's head back down to Delaware, the running of the Delaware Handicap. And they're off in the Delaware Handicap. And from the outside, as expected, two trail suit is going for that lead. In between horses, St. Linus down toward the inside, Silmaril. As they make their way off the shoot on the main course, two trail suits set to the front by Pat Day. St. Linus now angles to the outside. On the far outside, that's India Halo. Looks like Island Sand's going to be caught wide down the center of the track as they pass the finish line the first time with two trail suit by two. St. Linus second, India Halo up on the outside, down toward the inside. That's Racing Luck. A solo Pubella is a close up fifth. Strategy hugs that rail, saves all the ground. A nice move on Strategy's part as they make their way around the bend. Opening quarter in a good solid 23 and 2. Two trail Sue leads it by two over St. Linus Strategy. Right there with the rail in third, followed by Racing Luck, a solo Pubella three wide. Then a length and a half to India Halo. Island Sand from the far outside has made her way forwardly toward the inside. Next line, Freels for real. Up on the outside, that's Silmaril. Followed by down toward the inside, Personal Legend. And your trailer is Becky in pink. Half goes in 47 and one. They've got under six furlongs to go. And two trail Sue. She'll be tough on the front end today. Leads it by three and a half with St. Lena. Strategy toward the inside. As Sola Puvelis five lengths off the lead. Racing luck next in line. Then comes Island Sand. Personal Legend begins to move up toward the inside. Freels for real. Silmaril up on the outside. India Halo and Becky in pink is the trailer. They make their way into the turn. The six and a good 111 and four. Three eights to go. Two trail Sue leads it by two. St. Linus is in pursuit. Another two length gap to Island Sand and Bailey's letting out a notch on that one. Toward the inside. That's a Sola Pubella. She seems to have no run today. Silmaril is gaining steadily from the back of the pack. Two trail Sue. Here comes Island Sand and Jerry Bailey on the outside with dead aim as they turn for home in the million dollar Delaware handicap. It's going to be Day and Bailey. Day on the inside. Two trail Sue. Up on the outside. Island Sand and Jerry Bailey. She forges to the front and begins to edge away. Island Sand and Jerry Bailey takes the Delaware Handicap to Trail Sue, a good second, personal legend, rally for third, frills for real, fourth. Island Sand, interestingly enough, the only grade one winner in the field allowed to go off at almost six to one, draws Claire by three and three quarters under Jerry Bailey, a terrific ride by Jerry. She, despite that outside post position, post position 11 in a full field going two turns, was able to negotiate a nice trip with a three wide middle move, leaving the second turn and drawing away from the pace setter to trail Sue off an impressive victory last time out. Third going to personal legend who we've seen in a number of races in New York. She's been a solid campaigner for the uh, for the Bobby Frankel barn, picking up yet another check here and running third. Freels for real, another one making a nice effort, 25 to one. Very disappointing. Pointing here was Isola Pubella, the favorite. A little difficult to handle in the gate. She acted up quite a bit, and she did uh, really not uh, not run one of her better races. She did get into the game a little bit early before fading under John Velasquez to finish eighth in the field of 11. The winner, Island Sand, a dark bay or brown, four-year-old daughter of Tabasco Cat from Sue's Last Dance by 49er, was bred in Kentucky by Richard D. Maynard. Owned by the B.A. Man Incorporated, 
Trained by Larry Jones and ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey, Island Sand completes the mile and a quarter at Delaware Park in 202 and 4. We are going to pause for a brief message. When we return, we're going to remain in the Mid-Atlantic. We're going to head to New Jersey and Virginia. Please stay with us. NYBreads.com, the online home of North America's best incentive program. The latest news, updated throughout the day, plus streaming video of New York Bread Stakes winners. Check out the New York Bread leaderboards for jockeys, trainers, owners, and breeders. Want to become an owner or breeder? Well, the New York Thoroughbred Breeders section tells you about upcoming new owner seminars and farm tours. You'll even find an online sales section with horses you can purchase right now. There's a directory of New York State Farms, a stallion registry, plus up-to-date sales information complete with hip numbers and pedigree pages. Thinking of breeding your mare? First go to nybreads.com and run a hypothetical mating with any registered New York based stallion. And finally at nybreads.com, you'll see why the New York Breeding and Racing Program is North America's best, with over $40 million a year in purses, incentives, and awards. So get with the program at nybreads.com. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to remain in the Mid-Atlantic. We're going to head to New Jersey next. We're on Saturday. They ran the Long Branch Breeders' Cup Stakes at Grade 3 for the three-year-olds. This is a prep for the Haskell later on in the meet. Let's head down to New Jersey in the running of the Long Branch. They're racing in the Long Branch. Smokescreen is step slow to start. And Shark goes to the front with first word. Park Avenue ball is out with speed on the inside. Then Tanny Maru, Golden Man, and a gap of four back to check off, who's racing outside of Secret Woods. Smoke screen, last and wide going into the turn. He's eight lengths off the lead, which is shared by Shark and Park Avenue ball on the clubhouse turn. Shark's on the outside, and Shark and Eddie King will take the lead as Krista Carlo lets him roll there with Park Avenue ball taken back in second. Then first word, third to the outside. The First quarter, 23 and 2. A length and a half back to Tanny Maru, fourth on the inside, then Golden Man in fifth. Smoke screen is outside of horses. Check off between and Secret Woods at the rail. Six lengths off the lead in the run up the back stretch. Shark ran a half in 47 and 1, uncontested at the half mile pole. He's a length and a half in front of the pair of Park Avenue ball and first word. Then Tanny Maru on the inside, fourth. Golden Man fifth, three and a half lengths off the lead. Smoke screen next, check off, and Secret Woods trails the field. Shark is the one to catch. He's led all the way so far. And there goes Park Avenue Ball to the outside, and he's easily taken the lead. Park Avenue Ball is opened up by two at the quarter pole. Shark is given way. Golden Man, smoke screen, check off, circles up on the far outside. First word in Tanny Maru into the stretch, and it's Park Avenue Ball. And he's five lengths in front at the eighth pole. Then Golden Man, smoke screen, and check off coming to the 16th pole, and Park Avenue Ball is going to dominate the Long Branch on his way to the Haskell. Park Avenue ball by seven. It's very close for a second between Golden Man and Chekhov, and then came Smokescreen. Park Avenue ball, very impressive as a two-year-old last year. Really tailed off a little bit towards the end of the season and into the winter time, but seems to have come back with a vengeance here with a romping six and a quarter length victory over Chekhov, Golden Man. You remember that name? He ran the very next day in the Leonard Richards. But yes, Golden Man, it's the same horse picking up the third spot in the Long Branch for a very profitable weekend over this past weekend for uh, Sanford Goldfarb and partners on Golden Man. But the winner, Park Avenue Ball, and no doubt about it, winner kicking clear after a stalking trip in the early going right behind the pace setter shark but uh, Chris DiCarlo had him well in hand throughout. The winner Park Avenue Ball is a chestnut three-year-old son of city dancer from Road to the Ball by Cahill Road bred in New Jersey by this by CJ Hess owned by the Charmari stable and trained by Jim Ryerson ridden to victory by Chris DiCarlo. Park Avenue Ball covers the mile on the 16th and 141 and four. We're going to continue now in the Mid-Atlantic and head to Colonial Downs for a trio of Saturday stakes races for their big day of racing, kicking off with the Virginia Oaks for three-year-old fillies. Let's head down to Colonial in the running of the Virginia Oaks. And we're off and running in the Virginia Oaks. 
Flashy three with a great start from the gate. Snug Harbor's got early foot as well. And taken back there, Stavinsky's gallant tight quarters. Rich in spirit has advanced into third and tugging in between horses. At the fence as Masseuse from her inside gate, followed by My Typhoon racing about mid-pack there. Stavinsky's gal now drops to second last position and passed by Dyna Mist. Dyna Mist is racing in the two path and about six lengths on the front and Defensa at the tail of the field. So midway on the first turn, Horacio Caramanis a pacemaker, Snug Harbor in front here. As they move up the back straight now, Snug Harbor under a snug hole, leading it at a controlled pace. Flashy three, My Typhoon is third, length and a half, Masseuse in fourth. Here's Rich in spirit, very comfortable in fifth and four lengths from the front. A gap of two to Dynamist and another two and a half to Stavinsky's gal, and Defensa is the last horse and about a dozen lengths off the lead. Still held by Snug Harbor from Flashy three. Snug Harbor inside of Flashy three, and it's another two. My Typhoon got a winning shot from third, Masseuse is in fourth. Rich in spirit was comfortable earlier on. Now getting at a nudge here is a Rich in spirit from Gary Stevens and Rich in spirit attempts to close the gap but still four from the front but Stavinsky's gal moving strongly on the outside. Stavinsky's gal's going right on Rich by Rich in spirit as they get to the top of the lane all bunched up here. Flashy three my typhoon Stavinsky's gal. Rich in spirit is right there and down to the fence Snug Harbor is giving way and they turn for home in the Virginia Oaks and my typhoon leads the way. Rich in spirit flashy three in between horses as masseuse is trying to slice on through with a winning chance a furlong to go masseuse strolling up on the inside and on the outside my typhoon my typhoon masseuse my typhoon trying to hold off masseuse as they come to the line my typhoon there to win my typhoon by a head from masseuse second rich in spirit third and dynamist was fourth followed by defense and flashy three and back second to last davinsky's gala made a brilliant move around a final term but flattened out in snug harbor if this re race keeps drawing fields like this, it will get its crated status relatively quickly. This really was a very, very solid field of three-year-old turf fillies. And my typhoon, who has been chasing Melhor Ayinda throughout a good portion of, the, uh, of her career, ends up free of that rival under Jerry Bailey, winning by a neck over Masseuse, who made a huge move on the rail late to pick up the second spot. Rich in spirit, the favorite in the field of eight, settling for the third spot after being unhurried early and a little wide on the turn. Virginia Oaks winner My Typhoon is a three-year-old chestnut daughter of Giants Causeway from Urban Sea by Ms. Wacky. She was bred in Ireland by Sunderland Holdings, owned by Live Oak Plantation and trained by Bill, Bill Mott. The half-sister to European champion Galileo, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey, My Typhoon completes the mile and an eighth on the turf in 149 and three. We're going to head right back to Colonial now in the running of the All Along Breeders' Cup. Phillies and mares, older horses this time once again on the turf course in a grade three company. Let's head back down to Colonial in the running of the All Along. And they're off. Topiary from the inside, first to break away from the gate, and uh, Dynami has got early foot, but there goes Stupendous Miss and Gary Stevens out to dictate the term. So Stupendous Miss will be that leader, opening up two links, and uh, Dynami in the second spot of the far outside is Path of Thunder, and down to the fence is Storm and Dana, followed by Broad Hopes racing in between horses. Topiary has settled now, about uh, mid-pack. Then to the outside is Briviesca racing in the two path, and Sagita Ra is uh, unhurried third to last and humoristic second to last, and uh, Kokineri is a, a trailer, and the pacemaker up the back stretch in the rain is still Stupendous Miss. Stupendous Miss uh, running along now on a six and a half length advantage. In the second spot is Dynamia, followed on the outside by Path of Thunder in third. Broad Hopes is tugging now inside and forth. Riviesca and Storm and Dana are racing as a team as they push on for the far turn. Still the leader and the solo leader out there, Stupendous Miss. By some five to six lengths, Dynamia's second path of thunder, Broad Hopes to the inside. Then it's back to Briviesca, followed by Storm and Dana. Humoristic and Topiary is in between horses. Sagita Ra still racing toward the back of the pack and trailing the field is Colconeri there at the top of the stretch and they have caught the front running stupendous miss. And Dynamia relishing the tur firm turf here, even with a rainstorm. It is Dynamia opening up here and in second, uh, Stupendous Miss who's actually hanging in and trying to come back for more. Stupendous Miss running a brave one. Uh, Stupendous Miss in between horses rallying is humoristic on the far outside and Stupendous Miss and a superb effort. 
Stupendous Miss has gone on and come back to win. Stupendous Miss, humoristic in the photo with Dynamia, followed by Topiaria and Topiary, then a Sagita Ra. Back Stupendous Miss, one of the game races this weekend, certainly. She opened up as much as seven lengths under Gary Stevens with a long hold, relaxing on this yielding surface, and uh, as was headed, not only headed, but passed at uh, the top of the stretch by Dynamia. It appeared that that one was going to go on to a romping win, but uh, Gary Stevens persevering with a game stupendous miss who re-rallied and ended up with a net with a length victory over humoristic who rallied up and was able to catch Dynamia in the shadow of the wire. The winner stupendous miss a dark bayer brown four-year-old daughter of Dinah Former from Subine by Kerleon was bred in Kentucky by Gainesboro Farm, owned by the Horizon Stable, trained by Wally DeLossi and ridden to victory by Gary Stevens. Stupendous Miss runs the mile and an eighth on the yielding surface at Colonial in 151 flat. Next up, the Virginia Derby at the grade three, half a million dollar mile and a quarter on the turf for the three-year-olds. Let's head back to Colonial in the running of the Virginia Derby. And they're off in the Virginia Derby. Solid start for the favorite English Channel, the Chattahoochee War, and Patrick Valenzuela going right out to the front. So it's Chattahoochee War, English Channel, right there with that early pace. On the far outside, now Rush Bay is very close and only two and a half lengths off that lead, followed by Spring Houses taken back. Rebel Rebel from the inside post position. Crown Point is parked in between horses, just four lengths from the front. Ray de Cafe, followed by the Gray Silver Whistle. And the last horse back there is Interpretation. So into the first turn now, Chattahoochee War, Deliberate pace set by Chattahoochee Warren Patrick Valenzuela, slowing it right on down by a length and a half on the yielding going here. English Channel second, Rebel Rebel, and Jerry Bailey to the inside in third. The outside, Rush Bay is right up close there. Crown Point is in fifth in mid pack, followed by Ray de Cafe and Silver Whistle. Back to interpretation with one beaten spring house is last of all and some ten lengths on the front. Up the Colonial Downs back straight, Chattahoochee War about five A's out. Going well, Chattahoochee War by a length and a half. English Channel gets a nudge to go on. Rebel Rebel still got a winning shot going smoothly enough at this juncture. On the outside, Rush Bay, followed by Crown Point is coming under a bit of pressure now as they have passed the half mile pole. And Ray de Cafe, seven lengths to close in. Silver Whistle is next, followed by Interpretation and Spring House just not doing much at this point. Racing into the far turn, Chattahoochee War trying to take them all away. Chattahoochee Chattahoochee War still there. One more gear. Chattahoochee War opens up a length and a half on English Channel. Rush Bay on the far outside and Rebel Rebel racing down to the fence. On the outside there is Interpretation is going to be five wide of the quarter pole. Silver Whistles in behind horses. Crown Point is running a big one in between as well. And they turn for home and Chattahoochee War set down in English Channel. They're on the outside. English Channel, look at this. English Channel's taking the lead. Chattahoochee War on the inside. Cannot resist the run of English Channel and a powerhouse performance. English Channel simply runs away from Chattahoochee War. Rebel Rebel's going to run third and Silver Whistle fourth. English Channel and an outstanding performance to win the Virginia Derby. Chattahoochee War was second. Rebel Rebel third. Silver Whistle fourth. Followed by Crown Point and Spring House. And Bellback is interpretation. Followed by Rush Bay second to last. English Channel seems to like this colonial racing surface, picking up yet another victory, this time on a yielding surface as the rains did start to fall throughout the afternoon at Colonial. But English Channel, and no doubt about it, drawing clear winner three and a quarter lengths as the even money choice over the pace setting Chattahoochee War. Rebel Rebel, a pretty nice try in his, uh, in his American Stakes debut. This is a horse that did run very well in major company overseas, going middle distances here, stretched out a little bit, and ran, I thought, a creditable effort to finish third for Bobby Frankel and Jerry Bailey. The winner, English Channel, a chestnut three-year-old son of Smart Strike from Belva by Theatrical, was bred in Kentucky by the Keen Ridge Farm, owned by James Scatorchio and trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by John Velasquez. English Channel looking to uh, see, continue the series next out in the Secretariat with, a, uh, with yet another mile and a quarter run on the turf for the three-year-olds. English Channel, clearly the leader in the three-year-old turf division, covers the mile and a quarter on the yielding surface in 202 and two. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from the Midwest. We're going to head to Arlington, where on Saturday they ran the round table stakes. Three-year-olds going nine furlongs for $100,000. Let's head to Arlington in the running of the round table. 
And they're off for the round table stakes. Thunder Mission and Bob O's boy both showing speed. Apache Point breaks well toward the rail and straight line is up and on the pace as they make their way into this first turn. Brian Hernandez Jr. takes Thunder Mission out to the front. Thunder Mission in front of Bob O's boy by a length and a half. Apache Point right there at the rail at the heels of the leaders and straight line in the clear fourth. Devilment between horses fifth. And Devilment is under restraint in a very tight spot. Devilment in the blue cap steadies at heels. High expectations, nice and settled there. High expectations, a half dozen or seven from Thunder Mission, that unopposed front runner. Then Real Dandy down at the rail, and Tupper Lake is running in eighth. The opening quarter, 23 and two. Up the back stretch, the son of pulpit, Thunder Mission at those long odds, under five for longs to go. Thunder Mission by two to Bobbo's boy. Straight line and Chris Amy, well spotted third, Apache Point. Devilment now settled in the three path and five from the front with four for longs to go on the round table. High expectations, six or seven from the front. At the back, Real Dandy and Tupper Lake, they're a joint last, half mile and 46 and four. They round the far turn. Thunder Mission still in front, this longtime leader from Bob O's boy being driven to challenge. Devilment now circles outside a straight line. Here's Devilment coming up to Thunder Mission at the quarter pole. High expectations, Tupper Lake. Real Dandy ground saving both turns and coming up the inside, Real Dandy. Apache point wide and last as they come for home. Three quarters, one, ten, and three. Into the final furlong and a half. Devilment has collared Thunder Mission. A furlong out. High expectations on the stand side. Real dandy between horses. But Devilment got the jump. Carlos Marquez Jr. And here's Devilment. Dead out the one for a pinout stable win. Devilment by two. Real dandy second. High expectations. Thunder Mission, Tupper Lake. Straight line after that. Apache Point and Bobo's boy. Pace and faded. Devilman and Carlos Marquez picking up the victory by two, sitting off of the pace in mid-pack and making a nice rallying moves after studying on the backstretch to win by two over the favored Real Dandy. High expectation showing very little speed, but rallying belatedly off the rail. The winner, Devilment, is a three-year-old Dark Bayer Brown son of Peaks and Valleys from, uh, from Dabli Diablier by Deputy Minister, bred in Kentucky by Riverbend Farm and owned by Pin Oak Stable. Trained by Michael Stidham and ridden to victory by Carlos Marquez Jr. Devilment covers the mile in an eighth at Arlington in 147 and three. We are going to pause now for one more brief message and when we return, we'll be heading to Hollywood Park, finishing up their spring and summer meet and returning to New York. Please stay with us. And finally, in sports tonight, billboards in Kentucky, welcoming you to the horse capital of the world, New York. How's that? Well, it's a marketing campaign to get Kentuckians to rally behind their horse industry. Folks down in the bluegrass must be getting a little worried, a little squeamish, a little verklempt over the incredible achievements of thoroughbreds bred right here in New York. Hey, don't worry, Kentucky. At least you still have a derby. The New York Breeding and Racing Program just keeps getting bigger and better. In 2005, registered New York breads will compete for a record $45 million in purses and incentives. And speaking of records, last year, New York breads won 40 open stakes, including Funny Side in the Grade 1 Jockey Club Gold Cup. Funny Side has won! People from all walks of life, from all sports, are getting with the program. Shouldn't you? Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now at Hollywood Park, where they completed their spring and summer meet this past weekend, beginning on Saturday with the Hollywood Juvenile Championship for two-year-olds, a grade $300,000, six furlongs. Looked like it was going to come down to two very quick maiden breakers and what a song and bashert. Let's head out to California and the Hollywood Juvenile. They're off. Blaze it and Bashert break one, two. What a song just inside of Bashert. Double parks at the rail, and the early trailer is Stevie Wonderboy. Bashert ducked in just a bit at the break and went towards What a Song, but now these two establish their position up the back stretch, and Bashert's a neck in front. What a Song is at the rail in second. Blaze it right with the favorites third, and now What a Song. Looks like Victor Espinosa is going to try to take him back through from the inside. So Bashert and Blaze it are now one, two, and What a Song will be in behind horses, take the dirt in his face now, two from the the front. Then comes Stevie Wonderboy, who's getting out badly around the far turn and double parked his badly outrun as they run towards the top of the stretch in the 66th Hollywood Juvenile Championship. And it's Blazed and Bashert 1 2. What a song! 
back into the bit, and he likes it much better in the three path. And here comes What a Song to engage Bashard at the top of the stretch, and the two favorites kick on from Blaze It. It's two and a half lengths for the back to Stevie Wonderboy. Bashard's a neck in front. What a song to the outside, and they come to the final 16th, and both of them push their stack all in. It is What a Song to the outside. Bashard at the rail. What a song just ahead in front. Bashard battles back. What a song. What a song and Bashard, one, two in the Hollywood Juvenile, Stevie Wonderboy, a good third. What a song, picking up the victory here by a neck over Bashard. These two did appear on paper to be considerably better than the rest of the field. Stevie Wonderboy actually rallied from well off the pace after having been, uh, been a little bit uh, laggard in the early going. And did, uh, he did lug out just a little bit into the uh, end of the turn. But the top two here on paper clearly running in the top two spots as What a Song picks up a game neck victory. The winner, What a Song, is a dark bay or brown two-year-old son of Song and a Prayer from What a Night by Tough Night. He was bred in Florida by Susan Kahn, owned by Bob and Beverly Lewis, trained by Bob Baffert, and ridden to victory by Victor Espinoza. What a Song covers the six furlongs at Hollywood Park in 109 and 2. We're going to head back to Hollywood Park, finishing up their meet for the season uh, this spring with the Sunset Breeders' Cup Handicap. Older horses going long on the turf. Let's head back to Hollywood and the running of the Sunset. They're off. R. McLennan and TH approval break best, but R. McLennan going to take charge into the far turn the first time. He's two lengths in front. Balustrade and one off run past to TH Approval, who will sit fourth now in the early running. Hatif and Continuously are next. Runaway Dancer and always first at the back of the pack. Already about 12 from first to last, and long shot R. McLennan takes them into the stretch for the first time. One off comes to put some pressure on in second. R. McLennan, three quarters of a length. One off gallops al alongside in second as Balustrade backs off now. He's third and two and a half lengths off the lead. TH Approval has secured a good striking position for Rene Douglas. He's about five or six from the front and traveling very comfortably. Then it's two back, two. Hatif continuously has about nine lengths to make up. Still at the back of the pack are Runaway Dancer and Always First. Twelve lengths from first to last and R. McLennan and one off quicken away now into the clubhouse turn. R. McLennan's a half length in front and one off is outside of him. And these two have opened up now a big lead. R. McLennan's a length in front with one off in second. It's another six or seven lengths back to Balustrade in third. TH Approval is still getting the best trip though. He's about eight from the front and snugly in hand. Hatif is asked to go just a bit by Francisco Duran. He's got about 11 to make up. Continuously is 12 from the front. Always first has 14 to make up. And if Runaway Dancer wins the 64th Sunset Breeders' Cup handicap, he'll make up 17 links and do it in five furlongs as they head up the back stretch. R. McLennan and one off, still one two and still by themselves to the half mile pole. R. McLennan leads by a tight length with one off in second. TH approval is now asked to go after the front runners and he does it willingly. Balustrade trying to stay with TH. Then comes continuously. He draws within five of the lead and on the front end, one off has just taken charge and he's taking a, a big lead around the far turn. One off is now suddenly four lengths in front. TH approval goes after him now in second. Continuously is up to third. Hatif and Balustrade six from the front. Always first needs a way through. Runaway Dancer is still ten lengths behind. One off who's the one to beat. One off to the final furlong. TH approval now comes after him. Runaway Dancer is under Corking. He's four from the front, but he's closing with every stride. Always first, dives through at the rail. TH approval, always first. Runaway dancer, always first, rides the rail. Runaway dancer, always first in front. The 64th Sunset Breeders' Cup handicap goes to always first. He beat Runaway dancer. TH approval third, maybe one off for fourth. Always first, picking up the victory is first U.S. Stakes victory in a very nice effort by three quarters of a length over the dead heating runaway dancer and T.H. approval. It was uh, those two inseparable for the place spot, the fourth spot going to one off. But uh, always first, a very impressive performance in his U.S. Stakes debut. The winner, always first, is a four-year-old Bay Gelding, a son of Barathea from Pink. Pink Crystal by Dealham, who was bred in Great Britain by D.B. Clark, A. and A.L., and Mrs. Penfold, owned by Sheikh Maktoum bin Rashid Al Maktoum, trained by Neil Drysdale and ridden to victory by Victor Espinoza, always first, completes the mile and a half on the Hollywood turf into 27 flat. 
We're going to head back to New York. Before we head to Belmont, we're going to stop at Finger Lakes for a pair of Saturday stakes races, beginning with the Wine Country Handicap for New York Breads. $50,000 on offer for older horses. Let's head to Finger Lakes and the running of the Wine Country. They're off in the Wine Country Handicap. Top Shotter breaks on top. Scary Bob on the outside. Legislature, then Karakoram Patriot. Special Jet. Mr. V and one and three is the trailer as they're down the back stretch. Top Shotter leads it by a length. Scary Bob, Legislature on the outside third, then Karakoram Patriot, Special Jet, Mr. V, and one and three is the trailer, 22 and one for the opening quarter. They round the turn, Top Shotter leads it by a length. Legislature dries up on the outside and along the rail. Moving through, that scary Bob. Two lengths to Karakoram Patriot, Special Jet, one and three, and the trailer, Mr. V, as they have three sixteenths of a mile to go. It's Top Shotter trying to take them all the way. Scary Bob is second as they come through the stretch. It's Top Shotter on top by two lengths. Scary Bob on the outside trying to close the gap, but Top Shotter remains strong. It's Top Shotter at the eighth pole now, drawing away by five. This is some horse. It's Top Shotter on top by seven, going to win the wine country easily. Top Shotter wins it very tight. Karakorum Patriot or Scary Bob for the place. Legislature was fourth. The running time. Look at that time. 108 and two. You like good sprinters i don't know how you can't like this guy now he's seven for seven at finger legs he's an absolute monster out there kicking clear is top shoulder carrying a 130 pound impost to victory in a very nice time as well Top Shoulder is one serious racehorse in the New York bred divisions and outside of it as well. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Charlton Baker ship this guy to Saratoga as he has in the past. Karakorian Patriot, a very nice effort to finish in the second spot. A nose in front of Scary Bob, who did track the early leader, doing a lot of the hard work chasing Top Shoulder early. The winner, Top Shoulder is a six-year-old Dark Bayer Brown, gelded son of Orms Ormsby from Raja Diddle by Raja's Revenge. He was bred in New York by Michael Anschell, owned and trained by Charlton Baker, ridden to victory by Pedro Rodriguez. Top Shoulder completes the six furlongs of Finger Lakes in 108 and two. We're gonna head right back to the lakes now in the running of the New York Derby, the second leg of the OTB Big Apple Triple for three-year-old New York breads. Mile and the 16th is the distance, let's head Back to Finger Lakes in the running of the New York Derby. They're off in the New York Derby. Quickest away. Account for the gold in the center of the track. On the far outside, Golden Roses, Thunder Prince, Bold Decision, Caribbean Cruiser, Freddie the Cap. Moving between horses, two outs in the ninth as they head into the clubhouse turn. Along the rail, account for the gold. On the outside, Golden Roses is second. Freddy the Cap is third, Caribbean Cruiser, then Thunder Prince. As they head around the turn and into the backstretch, the quarter, a quick 22 and one. It's a count for the gold by one length. Golden Roses on the outside is second, Caribbean Cruiser third, Freddy the Cap, then Bold Decision, followed by Thunder Prince, Turgesti, two outs in the ninth, Meniscus and Naughty New Yorker is the trailer as they go by the half in a swift 45 and three. They round the turn and into the far turn on the front end, account for the gold by a half a length. Golden Roses is second, Caribbean Cruiser is third. Up on the outside comes Bold Decision, followed by Thunder Prince and Freddie the Cap with 3 sixteenths of a mile to go. Account for the goal, leads it by a length. Golden Roses right there second as they hit the top of the stretch in the New York Derby. A Count for the gold by a length. Golden Roses on the outside is second. Through the stretch they come. Account for the gold trying to take them wire to wire. Golden Roses is second as they come to the eighth pole. It's a count for the gold on top by two lengths. Golden Roses is second. Account for the gold now at the eighth pole on top by three. And account for the gold is going to win the New York Derby. Account for the gold by four. Golden Roses second. Naughty New Yorker rallies for third. And Thunder Prince was fourth. The running time, 139 and two. 
account for the gold, pulling off an upset here, but if you really took a close look at things, this horse made a great deal of sense. He had reasonably good tactical speed, but this is a horse that spent a good portion of his two-year-old season running against very good open company type horses north of the border in Canada where he has been based. He did win an allowance race two races back prior to a uh, disappointing turf try last time out, but this guy at 11 to 1 dismissed and romping home under Raymond Saborin. Golden Roses finishing in the second spot after tracking every step of the way. Naughty New Yorker, his usual off the pace running style, not working all that effectively when the pace was slowed down here going the distance of ground out at Finger Lakes, plodding up to finish in the third spot as the odds on choice. The winner account for the gold is a three-year-old New York bred bay son of successful appeal from a countess by private account. Bred in New York by the Says Who Thoroughbreds and owned by Richard Simon, trained by Mark Cassie and ridden to victory by Raymond Saborin. Account for the gold completes the mile and the 16th at the Finger at Finger Lakes in the New York Derby in 143 and 3. Now we're going to head back downstate New York for a pair of stakes races from Belmont, beginning with Saturday's running of the Bowling Green on the turf. For three-year-olds and up, let's head down to Belmont for the call of the Bowling Green. And they're off. Navisink River and Salic Law. Toward the outside, relaxed gesture is forwardly placed early on. Treadnought down toward the inside. And then it's Catchwells, followed by exterior five lengths back to McCaw, the early trader. So as they move by us for the first time, Salic Law takes his uh, usual early position, moving to be the pacemaker. Relaxed gesture, sits back and concedes the lead to Salic Law. And then it's Navisink River, who's third on the outside. Dreadnought is fourth. Catch Wells will be taken four wide into that first turn. And then it's Exterior, who's drafting in behind that wall of horses. And five or six lengths now, back to McCaw, trailing the field behind an easy pace here established by Salic Law. The first quarter was a waltz, 26 and one. Into the backstretch run. Salic Law in front, Richard Migliori rationing out his speed to lead by three quarters of a length over Catchwells. The favorite relaxed jester is sitting comfortably in behind the lead in third. On the outside, it's Navisink River, Dreadnought under a good hold, alongside Dreadnought, it's exterior, and it's a big, big break, a dozen lengths back to the trailer, Macaw. 51 and four was the opening half mile for Salic Law. Catchwell's now beginning to apply a little pressure to Salic Law. Relaxed Jester continues to rake comfortably with five furlongs to go. Then it's Dreadnought down toward the inside, still on hold. Navisink River situated on the outside and in the clear. Exterior continues to race covered up in behind horses as they move into the far turn. Less than a half mile to go. Three quarters went in 117 flat. Rounding the far turn, Salic Law. Salic Law, three quarters of a length. Catchwell's second. Navisink River driving on the outside third. Relax Gesture is fourth. Exterior is fifth. And Dreadnought lost several spots on the turn, has been shuffled back. And now the field turns for home. Salic Law, Catch Wells, and Relax Gesture poised to pounce third with less than a quarter mile to go. Top of the stretch. Catch Wells now up for a short lead. Catch Wells in front. Salic Law fights on. Relax Gesture is coming with a determined run on the outside. Catch Wells a half length. Relax Gesture driving up to him, just a neck behind. But it is still Catch Wells. Catch Wells and Relax Gesture. They hit the wire together, and Catch Wells held it. Relaxed Jester just could not get by him in a thrilling stretch run. It was close for third between Dreadnought and Exterior. Capped Wells getting a very game victory here at 26 to 1. I followed this guy through allowance races and uh, high price claimers and optional claimers for quite some time, and I've done okay with him, but I really didn't care for him all that much in this particular spot at 26 to 1, the longest shot on the board, pulling off the upset over Relaxed Jester, who was coming in out of grade one company last time out. Dead game, but just not quite able to get there. I assume that Brees Blanc probably figured that the long shot was going to come back to him. Dreadnought, a solid effort after raiding along inside to finish in the third spot. The winner, Cactwells, is a bay gelded five year old son of Polyglot from Cact Fitz by Fitzcarraldo. He was bred by Firmamento in Argentina, owned by the Castle Top Stable, and trained by Stanley Huff. Ridden to victory by Ibar Coa. It was reported that Cactwells was vanned off all after this race. Apparently, in the process of pulling up, he did suffer a minor injury. It does not appear to be anything serious. It was also noted that McCaw was eased 
Houston Vandoff. Uh, no, uh, no follow-up was available from the Angel Pena operation with regard to the condition of stakes winning uh, Macaw after being vanned off in the running of the Bowling Green. The winner, Catwells, under Ibarcoa, completes the mile and three ace at Belmont Park in, on the turf course in 215 and two. From distance runners on the turf to sprinters on the main track, we're going to take a look now at the running of the Tom Fool on Sunday, grade two, $150,000, seven furlongs. Let's head back to Belmont, the running of the Tom Fool. And they're off. And they all came away to a good beginning. Smoke Hume on the inside. Gadassi's Kamzer on the outside. And Voodoo in between horses. Clever Electrician is racing in fourth. Willie of the Valley in fifth. Swing for the fences. The early trailer as they move up the back stretch. And it's Gadassi's Kamza leading by a half length. Smoke Hume at the rail is in second. A little more than a length. To Voodoo, who's racing in third. A gap of two to Clever Electrician in fourth. The opening quarter was 22 and two fifth seconds. It's almost five lengths back to the two trailers. Swing for the fences and Willie of the Valley. They move around the far turn and long shot Gadassi's Kamza leads by a length. Smoke Hume at the rail. Voodoo on the outside. The half went in 45 seconds. Clever Electrician is just four lengths from the lead. And farther back, the two trailers, Willie of the Valley, and swing for the fences. Into the stretch now. Smoke Hume now takes over. Smoke Hume is in front. Gadassi's Kamza has tailed off. It's Smoke Hume, the leader, with less than an eighth of a mile to the finish. Willie of the Valley putting in a late run. Clever Electrician on the far outside. Now a 16th to the finish. It's Smoke Hume by two lengths. Willie of the Valley on the inside. But Smoke Hume is going to win the Tom Fool. Willie of the Valley second, Clever Electrician was third. Last year, this race launched Ghost Zapper. I'm not sure if we're going to see Smoke Hume in the Breeders' Cup Classic this year, but a very nice effort by this four-year-old gelding to pick up the length victory under Chantal Sutherland, who has been uh, uh, very well supported by Alan Jerkins in terms of mounts. This was her second win on this horse at this meeting, but uh, has not had the biggest percentage going thus far despite trying very hard and riding very, very well down in New York. And Chantal, it's certainly nice to see her getting this first graded stakes victory in New York for Mr. Jerkins. The victory coming at the expense of Willie of the Valley, who rallied well from off the pace, and Clever Electrician, who I suppose decided to try this spot instead of going out to uh, the middle part of the state and uh, trying to take on the likes of Top Shoulder for one-third the, the uh, total win value. But uh, nice effort on a sloppy racing surface by Smoke Hume, a four year old gelded son of smoke black and from presume by Nijinsky was bred in Florida by Hobo Farm owned by the breeder trained by Alan Jerkins ridden to victory in her first graded stakes victory in New York by Chantal Sutherland. Smoke Hume covers the seven furlongs on the off going at Belmont Park in 121 and four. That's going to wrap up this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.